what is the full step by step procedure that's involved when i'm importing from india into the uk or what is the entire journey of uh, you know starting from procurement in india until the goods reach the uk warehouse so this is a very common question that i get asked in my one to one consultations so in spite of uh, you know having the other videos i think still people have doubt about the entire journey of how the goods come into the uk and that's exactly what i'm going to be covering in today's video so i'll be covering the six steps that you need to know when you are importing from india into the uk i had made a video about this it is my very first video when i launched my youtube channel where i talked about the importing process and the documents involved as well so definitely check that out so i leave the link in the description as well as uh, you know up here because i'm not going to be covering the things that is covered in that video so if you watch both these videos you'll get a better idea if you have any more questions as always please feel free to put it in the comments below and then i'll be happy to uh, answer them and if you haven't subscribed yet please subscribe to my channel because i know many of you i can see that over 50% of you haven't subscribed yet and you're not getting the notifications when i am uploading a video so do subs and hit the notification bell okay so without further ado let's get into it so step number 1 it is identifying your product most of you at least 95% of you who contact me are you know in a good stage in this because you have already identified your product and you know what your product is and then you say okay how do i import it into the uk so for those for those of you who haven't identified your product or decided your product your first step is to decide what is the product that you want to import into the uk whether it's from india or any other country so what you'll have to do is you'll have to think of if the product has any demand in the uk or the country you are planning to import has is there any restrictions for those product is there any extra certifications that you require if you are importing that product so the first step is identifying your product and step number 2 is selecting your supplier because now that you have identified your product you have to select your supplier now so for selecting your supplier what you will be doing is you will be doing your research and understanding if that is the supplier that you want to work with again r&d is very important when you do business so when you are shortlisting your suppliers the few things that you need to keep in mind is you need to think of what accreditations they have in the factory as i have mentioned in my first video as well you know hasip is the basic certification and iso 22000 that's also a certification which mostly the uh, the factories or the manufacturers in india have do they have an export license and how is the quality of the product are you happy with the quality of the product and can they supply you on a regular basis how much volume or what's the capacity of their production so these are the kind of things that you need to keep in mind as well i'm not going into too much details about all these points because i have made separate videos on these once you have confirmed your supplier or kind of short listed your supplier again you need to speak to many suppliers and shortlist at least two or three people so once you have done that is when you will be negotiating your terms of payment your terms of delivery and the packaging and you know all those kind of things okay so the terms of um, payment or terms of delivery so you will be coming across few terminologies so one could be x works which means the factory price and the next could be fob which is free on board which means they the cost is until the port of shipping if it's cochin port it will be cochin uh, you know that is the fob or it could be cnf or cif which is cost and freight or cost insurance and freight which means the shipping or the freight is covered until uk port of felix to or whichever port it's going to be coming so those are the three kind of uh, terms or the inco terms that you will come across when you speak to suppliers now point number 3 is customs documentation so once you have shortlisted your product and your supplier you need to speak to your supplier and make sure you have all the necessary documentation so as i again as i've mentioned in my previous video the basic documentation you need to have is your invoice commercial invoice your packing list 
bill of lading if it's coming by ship or airway bill if it's coming by air freight and then you might have certain specific certificates like phytosanitary certificate or extra you know if it's a rice you might need license as well so those will be the extra certifications according to the product so that is the, ne the next stage so once you have all your customs documentation comes the next stage which is customs clearance so what happens is so once you have finalized your order with the supplier they will load the goods into the container and uh, you know when the goods will be loaded into the container it will be taken to the port let's say it's coming from Cochin port so they will be delivering it to the Cochin port if that's your terms of uh, payment or uh, delivery and it comes to Cochin port where you will they will be the supplier will be submitting the paperwork or if it's you you will be submitting the paperwork to the customs agent or the freight forwarding agent you give all the documents they will do all the you know inputting all the data into the HMRC and uh, all the uh, India you know documentation as well once that's done it gets into the ship so once it's loaded into the ship it comes via uh, the ship into UK and they will send the documents to the UK freight forwarder as well usually that's the arrangement earlier we had to be get involved as well but now it's straight away through the online system the UK agents get the paperwork and the documentation so once uh, you know the goods are loaded you need to notify your UK agent as well if they are separate that the goods has been loaded and it's on its way to the UK generally 28 to 30 days is what it takes or 35 days maximum is what it takes to come to the UK depending on which ship it has been on that note one question that comes is do you have to arrange the ship as well you don't have to arrange the ship if you are organizing a freight forwarder to do all these uh, paperwork and uh, you know loading and unloading and everything they will have contacts with the shipping agents or the ships and they will take care of the shipping that's the reason I always always recommend that you use a freight forwarder or a customs agent to uh, get your uh, you know goods delivered from India into the UK or whichever country it is so yeah so it comes into the ship and then it comes into UK and once it comes into the UK is your next um, customs clearance procedure where the freight forwarder will submit all the documents saying that these are the things that is coming in the container and if any other uh, you know extra documents that rail require they let you know and comes the next stage so that will be stage number five which is paying import duty and taxes so when it comes here then you will be the customs agent or the freight forwarding agent will let you know they will calculate once they input everything onto the system they let you know this much is the taxes that you have to pay or these goods have VAT and you have to pay import VAT so it could be import VAT or it could be a levy or it could be duty so these are the three type of things that you will come across so just as a general one for frozen goods you don't have VAT so it's only mostly levy or it would be the duty and on the note of duty if you are importing from India we have a trade deal with India and UK so you get a reduced duty rate which is called the generalized preference uh, rate where you will be paying less duty so make sure you do the declaration on the invoice that the goods are you know the country of origin is India so make sure you speak to the freight forward and understand if there is a trade deal if there is a trade deal you will get a reduced duty rate and if you do do the declaration on the invoice you get the advantage of a reduced duty rate as well so make sure you declare that on the invoice so after the uh, duty and uh, VAT or the levy is paid the customs agent usually if you have a relationship with them you already have them and what they'll do is they'll send you a bill saying that uh, the goods has been uh, you know all these has been put into the system and this is the duty this is the uh, clearance charges and this is all these kind of charges and then they'll be sending you an invoice bill which is what you will be paying and uh, after that is when they'll tell you if the goods have been chosen for any inspection sometimes the, the container can be chosen for inspection then there can be a slight delay otherwise usually if there is no inspection if there are no issues all the paperwork is given properly which is as uh, needed it can be cleared by two to three days actually then once the goods are cleared the agent will tell you the goods are cleared now it's ready to be delivered 
so in between they'll also ask you do you want to arrange as the delivery so what i do is let's say if i have to deliver it from here from london to leicester i'll ask them can you please arrange the delivery and give me a quote so it could come up to another 500 600 pounds for delivery from uk from uh, you know the felix to port to leicester so they will arrange the road transport so that is the next stage so stage number 6 is transportation or logistics so once the goods are cleared you pay the duty and everything and that's done the tra local road transport from your from the port to your warehouse or your customers warehouse or the warehouse where you're renting wherever it is so it was that is the next stage it goes from uh, UK port to the warehouse so basically that is it actually so we you know so these are the six steps that you need to keep in mind or you know this is the entire process or the procedure of uh, how the goods come from India into the UK so just as a recap to tell you so first you find your product then you find the supplier for those product once you have find your supplier or the manufacturer for those product make sure they've got the accreditation everything the goods will be loaded into the container once the customs comes and inspects the container that will be sealed it comes to the India port or the you know or the port that is going to be leaving and then from there there is a customs check then it gets into the ship or air freight or air cargo and it comes to the destination place which is UK in this instance and it comes here again there is another customs check as well so where they do all the inputting in the data you pay the duty the VAT or the levy you pay all those taxes you say the goods have to be delivered to this and this place and the road transport is arranged and it gets delivered to your place so that is the overall cycle of importing from you know India into the UK and you get the goods here so I hope it uh, made sense to you and uh, do make notes of uh, you know all these when you are doing this as well so it actually helps you while you're doing the entire uh, procedure and um, I wish you all the very best and um, yeah I'll see you in my next video take care bye bye